We're going to look at Matthew chapter 3. We actually have a little different uh, look at the baptism of Jesus. And uh, I was actually, um, Brother Ronnie called me this morning and said that his sister was not doing well. And he said, no, we're going to make sure it's okay that if, if you baptize the guys that are going to be baptized. And obviously it was. And he said, um, he said, just, you know, kept saying Baptist. Ba you, ever hear, you ever get into a conversation somewhere and you hear one word over and over and over again? It was baptism. I kept hearing over and over and over again. And it's not just because I'm kind of ignorant. It's actually because God, I think, was trying to tell me something. And when I started looking into the idea of baptism, there's a lot of different ideas about baptism. You've got an Old, old Testament, uh, uh, I guess, type of baptism, which it was actually a ritual washing. You have the baptism with the disciples. You have baptism as far as uh, Catholicism is concerned. Uh, they talk about, you know, pedo baptism baptism of children, things like that. But I, wonder, I just kept thinking, well, what is the true baptism? Now, when, I have to, when you go back and want to find the true of anything, you automatically go back to Jesus. So I went back and started looking at exactly in the Gospels where Jesus was baptized. So I went back and I looked. It's kind of strange because, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospel, and they're, very, they're almost exactly alike. Well, but John is usually a little bit different, right? So I wanted to look into John. And, but when I looked, read, it actually, you know, the part of the baptism I love, and we used to have it in our baptism where a dove was descending, like the Holy Spirit, like a dove, and it would rest on him and stay, rest and abide on Jesus. And it, it's actually uh, the one time in the Bible where all three of the, tr the Trinity, all three persons of the Trinity are, are visual. You have, or you know, audible at least, you have the Son being baptized, you have the Spirit descending like a dove, and you have the Father saying, this is my Son whom I, whom I am well pleased. Now that's what you usually hear when you hear about baptism. You hear about, this is my Son whom I'm well pleased. But did you know when you go to the, to the Gospel of Mark, it says... You are my son in whom I'm well pleased. You go to the Gospel of Luke, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. Well, why did Matthew have, you know, why did Matthew have, this is my son? It's like he's talking to everyone else. And when you try to look through the Gospel, you notice Matthew, it wants you to know about the power, it wants to know about how, how God was a God of the Jews and the Gentiles. He was a powerful God. Jesus is the Messiah. And what he's saying, I think Matthew, when he brings this out, he's saying exactly that. He's saying, this is the Messiah. You don't have to look any further. Now, when you talk about Mark and Luke, those are really secondhand accounts. And I'm sure when the disciples told them about this, they said it, the voice came out and it pointed Jesus out that he was the Son of God. And I'm going to tell you, it really doesn't matter what, what God's voice said. Truly, God's Son had been pointed out walking the earth. And it was during this time of baptism that God chose to show himself in all three persons. And I think we need to take a lot more, uh, I think we need to take it a lot more seriously when we do our ordinance of the Lord's Supper and, and of baptism. We need to take it seriously because it's a very serious thing. It's not just water. It's not just a symbol, symbol, symbolizing you believe in Christ. It's not just a regeneration, of, a symbol of regeneration. There's so much more. And I wanted to look at Matthew chapter 3, beginning with verse 7, and ask the question, why do we baptize? Why do we baptize? Do you know that uh, baptize, um, we, we baptize new believers in Christ? We, have, we baptize those that are not part of, of, the, of the Southern Baptist Church They'll come in and we baptize them too. And my, my wife's been baptized twice. I mean, that, it just seems kind of, it's almost like, oh, I can't believe it. I had one, one lady uh, that I, I was talking to her daughter, and her daughter had been baptized in a non denominational church. And, it, and she was my teenager. So I told her, I said, I'd like for her to be baptized. Well, if that doesn't make any sense, you're not accepting her salvation. No, that's not it at all. That's not it at all. And there shouldn't be any kind of negative vibe to this. It is you coming forth and saying, hey, I don't care. I am here to be with Jesus Christ. Now, we have that in order to get membership in this church. You have to have believer's baptism in a, in, a, in a Southern Baptist church. Why is that? Well, I think that you'll see here in just a minute when we go through this. So, why should we be baptized? And look at the baptism of Jesus. Beginning verse 7 of chapter 3 of the Gospel of Matthew, the Word of God declares, But when he saw many, this is Jesus, or uh, John the Baptist, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say, yourself, say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. 
For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. John the Baptist would not last more than ten months at a Southern Baptist church preaching like that, right? Verse 11, I baptize you, John's saying, with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Would you pray with me? Our Father God, we're so grateful that we can come to this time where we can celebrate this ordinance with these two young folks, and they're, they're wanting to come and to join through this believer's baptism. Father, I thank you, and I ask that you just make it, make it stern in our hearts and in our, in our lives and our spirit. The baptism is an important thing, Lord, that it is something you order. And Father, something you did yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ. And pray in His name. Amen. So why should, who or who should be baptized? That's the first thing. Who should be baptized? Well, let's go back and find out who shouldn't be baptized. Oh, you know, if you want to know who should, you got to say who shouldn't, right? Who shouldn't be baptized? Well, I think he starts off and he says, well... Not the Pharisees. Look what he says to the Pharisees. In verses 7 through 10, he says this. He saw them coming, the Pharisees and Sadducees, coming to his baptism. He said, you brood of vipers. And I used to hear, I heard a preacher one time say, are you a bunch of snakes? Listen to what the message, Eugene Peterson puts it this way. When John realized a lot of the Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for a baptismal experience, because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded, brood of snakes. What do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skins is going to make any difference? That gives an idea of what John the Baptist is saying. If you come to Christ in a false way, giving him only 99% of your life, that is not baptism. I don't care how much water you are baptized in. I don't care if you went to some of these frozen ponds and we chipped a hole and dunked you under there and pulled you back up. That's not baptism. The baptism is the baptism of Jesus. He's, and the Pharisees didn't understand this. They didn't understand that what was going on is they had something, something different. And he says the Pharisees are not, not, don't need to be baptized. Why? Because they had not followed the Christ. Look at, he says also, not the children of Abraham. Now, I think he's getting a little further. He's already downed all the religious leaders. Now he's going to move it on out a little bit. And he says this, being Jewish wasn't even enough. He says, you talking about children of Abraham? God can take the rocks that are on this road that you kick around everywhere, that you throw at people when you stone them to death, he could turn them into children of Abraham. Do you believe that? You remember when Jesus was in the, in the desert, in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, and he says, change these stones into bread, because I know you're hungry. And he says, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus could have turned those into bread. Boy, it would have been good bread. It wouldn't have been some of this bread that you get at some of these restaurants that's been out for a couple of days. It would have been fresh, nice, hot, and steamy bread. Jesus could have done it, and I'll guarantee you, just like Jesus said when they were calling out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they say, keep these guys quiet. He said, man, if I quiet them down, the stones will cry out. See, we don't understand because we, we see a rock, we think a rock. When God sees a rock, he sees creation. And I'm, I hate to tell you, we're not much better than rocks. We're really not. But he has chosen us as the king of his creation to go through these ordinances. And it's a very special thing. Even the children of Abraham, not only about you, I kind of of a blockhead sometimes, are you? Have you ever had a real stubborn streak in you? Art, have you ever had a stubborn streak? No no, you never know. No. Other than art, the rest of us are just really stubborn, right? Well, you know what? That's because we're not much better than rocks. 
Because if you want to talk about Prospect Baptist Church, God can go across there, dig those rocks out of that field, and turn him into a ten times a better church than what we are. Because God can do it. And this is what the John the Baptist is saying. He even goes on, he says, not that the children of Abraham will be baptized, not the fruitless either. The fruitless, those who are not showing fruit. The axe is at the base of the tree. If you have no fruit, shout timber. And you'll be thrown into the fire. There are many people, I mentioned last week, many people, one, one uh, statistic says upwards of 60% of the people in a Baptist church are unregenerate. And when that time comes to separate with that winnowing fork, you're going to say, oh my goodness, I thought that, that I thought I was saved or I thought they were saved, but it's not there because there's unregenerate. You think it happened, but it didn't happen. And when baptism goes, it all, and it's a good thing and a bad thing because you can be dunked in the water and think you're heavenly bound. But the water didn't make it. It's the baptism of Jesus. Who is not to be baptized? Those who are unrepentant. So the next question, how should we be baptized? And he begins by saying, with water. Boy, that's a, that's an, a novel idea, isn't it? I wish we'd have thought about that. You know, we, we all kind of kid around uh, whenever someone's going to get baptized. Was, you want ice water or warm water? And honestly, I baptize in both. One of my first baptisms, some teenagers I baptized, we had forgot to turn on the heater. And it was about this time of year... And let me tell you, that was the fastest baptism I've ever had in my life. And when we got out of there, I had, there was two guys. And you know, they didn't come to church after that very much. Of course, they probably had pneumonia after all that was over too. But The water here is really a symbolism. It is a water immersion. Now this is nothing, and we look at John the Baptist and we see him baptizing. And, and even a lot of commentators say, well, you know, this was something weird going on. But what was so weird about it is he was doing it every day. This was actually just a Jewish, a Jewish cleansing. They would actually come before Yom Kippur and other, and other feasts and they would cleanse themselves by confessing their sin. It's called a tevila. And I know y'all want to, if you want me to spell that, you have to, I got it in my notes, I'll spell it for you later. But it is an old Jewish ritual cleansing. You know, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? And Jesus said he'd be born of the water and the spirit. He's got to be cleansed and he's got to be born of the spirit. He's got to be born of water and the spirit. You have to repent before water does you any good. Now, this, uh, the tevila would actually be done in a stream, like a natural stream. It's called living water. And we hear that all through the New Testament, don't we, about the living water. Or they had these ritual, ritual baths that were just for that. Hey, we got one too. And every now and then there's crickets in it. Did y'all know that? Hopefully we scan, screened them all. If not, we'll get them before, you know. If you have one in your mouth, you come up, spit it, coming right back out. It's no big deal. They're clean crickets because they're in the baptismal. They've got to be clean, right? Yeah, I just made everything better, didn't I? Why do, how do, who, what, so, so how are we to be baptized? We do it with water. Next is a sign of belief. John the Baptist says, you know, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing what we have all done before. Before Yom Kippur, before the Feast of the Trumpets, Feast of the Tabernacles, all these things, Rosh Hashanah, all these things. We had done these ritual bathings for years and years. And these, these Pharisees come down and they're like, why are we doing it now? He said, you bunch of snakes. Your skin's got to be a little thinner before this one's going to work. Just because you came down to get the baptism doesn't mean your heart will be baptized. And he says, one comes after me that is greater than me. And he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, baptism, baptizo, bapto, there's all different kinds of words in the Greek. Baptizo means to immerse. Uh, when, you know, I have, a, lot of, I have a, a few of the guys I go to seminary with. That, uh, we have a Presbyterian seminary right next door in Louisville. But for some reason, the Presbyterians come to Southern because... We got things figured out a little better, I guess. But a lot of them will sprinkle. You know what it means to be sprinkled? They, they take a water and they throw it at you. Well, we do that whenever we have a water fun day out here, you know. What, what's, the, what's the big deal about baptism, about baptism, about immersion? It's a big difference. Do you know that Jesus was immersed? Do you know that Paul was immersed? Everyone Paul baptized, a few he baptized were immersed. 
That means to go under. You can be immersed in dirt, but it's hard to get you back up after that. Water is so much easier. But the idea here is not the water. It's not the going in, not even the coming up. It is the baptism that happens before the baptism. It is the baptism of the Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ. Verse 12, he will gather all together and burn the shaft. The testing of fire happens at the bap- because of the baptism of Jesus Christ. If you think the water is going to get you into heaven because you're going to go through fire, sorry, the water doesn't dry it up. It is everything will be burned up. Listen to what Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 3 in 1 Corinthians. Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. The fire will test. Each one of us will be tested by fire. Jesus doesn't use water to test things. He uses fire. Do you know why? Because if you are immortal in Jesus Christ, the fire will not consume you. But if you are not in Jesus Christ, you will be consumed. So what are we to do? We are to be baptized. It is a command of Jesus Christ. We call it an ordinance, an ordinance of the church. We are to be baptized. If you're here tonight and you've never been baptized, you are against the will of God. I know you hate to hear that. And don't take my word for it. Read it in your Bible. God, Jesus said, go into the world preaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And behold, I am with you always. can't leave that part out. Go into all the world, baptize. It is a command and a necessary act for membership in this church. Now, well, I don't want to be a member of the church. Well, I believe that's what you're called to be. If you don't want to be a member of this church, go somewhere else. You need to be working and serving in God's house somewhere. If you're not, then that's what this calling is for. The true baptism comes from Christ. It comes in the form of the Holy Spirit testing your soul, and saving you. But our belief and trust in Him is proved outwardly and symbolically in this ordinance that we're going to have in just a second. But I ask you, have you received the true baptism? Because you can't have a real baptism until you're baptized by Christ. So what is your decision? What has God spoke to you about this evening? Let's pray.